what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Fun With Dumb. It's been an exciting month. It was uh, Asian American Heritage Pacific Month. I don't know why our shit is so fucking long, but it is. <laughs> and to close it out this month, I got a very special guest, a friend of mine, who's uh, a Renaissance woman, if you will, who is an illustrator, um, artist, uh, model, uh, actress uh, recently, new, new yes. to acting, right? Yes, very new. Yeah, her name is Lauren Sai. Um, she's done it all at a very young age already, been in a reality show to being on some scripted shit and collabed with the top, like some of the top brands. Um, how you doing, Lauren? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for thank you for such a wonderful intro. Yeah, making it real formal after just hanging out, grabbing dinner, barbecue, grabbing all that dinner. shit. We, we already talked about everything, so. We did, I know. <laughs> we gotta act like we just didn't talk about that. But um, yeah, I mean, you just recently moved to Los Angeles. You lived in Japan. Yes. Uh, that move must have been interesting because you were in Japan for so long at such a young age working out there too, right? Yeah, um, I started I started working in Japan when I was 15, um, but I was just going there for the summers because I was still living in Hawaii and doing like the normal high school thing. So I would go to Japan over my summer vacations and do modeling there. Um, and then when I graduated high school, I decided that I was going to move there full time. So that is... Yeah, but you're, you're not Japanese. I'm not. I'm half Chinese, and then my mom is uh, mixed European. Cock yeah. Polish, that, Caucasian white. Yeah, that's interesting because you got your start over there, and a lot of people probably think you're uh, Japanese or something too, right? Or yeah, a lot of people, um, they do think I'm Japanese because I was based in Tokyo, but I am half Chinese. Yeah, and you were like part of... Um, you know shows that were very japanese based mm -hmm. um you were on terrace house and i i'm not really familiar with the show but i did watch it just after hearing that you're on it so i watched mm. like the first episode where everyone's doing the intro is it the one that's um the the hawaii season yeah yeah or? yeah the hawaii okay, season cool. yeah cool. oh you, were you on another season too i uh, know i was on the hawaii one. okay yeah the yeah. hawaii one and uh it was interesting because people like my friends are obsessed with the show and i was interested in like why people are obsessed with it it seems like a very wholesome version of like a more ratchet american reality show like in the house is yeah, that what that is yeah like normally when people uh talk about the show they describe it as the japanese real world right but it's very it's completely different yeah um, and i think that the charm comes from the the pacing of the show and the way it's filmed and just the emphasis on everyone's normal everyday lives uh, that's true as opposed to you know reality shows over here where it's focused on just making the most ridiculous scenarios right. and it does have more of a candid feel than the american reality shows yeah i think definitely um it sticks it stays very true to uh those the people's everyday lives and, and the commentators like it's like really oh like, that's the best part we're like yeah, in the yeah, living yeah. room with relatives or some shit uh -huh. like ta talking about no it's the best <laughs> talking about their like <laughs> niece and nephews or something it kind of has that feel a little yeah bit. it's crazy because you get you get to watch the show and you know do the commentary with your friends and watch the commentary so it's like double commentary right right it's you get to do commentary on the commentary yeah uh it's fun though yeah this that was interesting because uh i mean for you that was probably you're used to you were already modeling at that point this was your first tv thing yes yeah, so i let's see i went on to terrace house when i was 18 yeah. uh i yeah i applied for it when i was just finishing up my senior year of high school um i found like the <clears throat> application on facebook and i moved to tokyo because i was gonna like move there and do modeling but then when i got accepted on the show i moved back to hawaii to film that um, so I had been doing modeling, but just, just over the summers when I was going to Japan and kind of trying to make something happen with like Instagram and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, build my following there. But it was, uh, it's hard and it's hard to get people to notice you in that space. So, yeah. And, and I mean, we were talking about this earlier, how you were kind of generally shy when you were younger, right? Coming up yeah. and then jumping into a reality show is like, that's the complete opposite of shy shit. You know? Yeah, it was it was it was crazy, and I'm uh there's there's been uh there was another time in my life though when I did something like that. Uh, when I was 14, I went to boarding school in Massachusetts oh, for wow. a year, uh, for my freshman year of high school, and I think that it was like Boston or what? It was uh it was in Concord. It was this place okay. called Concord Academy that I went for one year, um but I ended up going back to Hawaii for the rest of high school after that. Um, How was that boarding school? It was. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Like it, boarding school is uh. <laughs> Terrace House, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, yeah, it, I'm really glad that I did it because yeah. I think that it's, it was a very special 
um, experience to be able to live with a bunch of kids age 14 to 18. There were a lot of people who were coming internationally, people from different states that I would probably never have the opportunity to meet otherwise. Um, it was a really wonderful time. It was very emotional, I think, because mm. I was still, I, you know, I still was figuring out so much about myself. I was still figuring like out. Like young, but like <laughs> alone without like parental figures. We had, well, there were, at, at each like house, there were people that like stayed there and then the teachers were very uh, helpful, but there were also the day students too. So like half the kids at the school went home every day. Oh, okay. Um, and then half the kids were boarding kids who were right. like living there. Um, and then we went home for you know vacations and some people who lived like an hour or two away they went home for the weekends Mm. um so you're generally used to like living in different uh, cities and different countries or moving uh, around yeah i guess so um yeah i guess so (laughs) (laughs) no No, i I think yeah no when, when you and then when you went to japan like was that a culture shock or it was I well I was someone who who found out about Japan and like the culture of Japan and uh, through online. So and you I were think and were you into like Japanese culture? I was really into because um, I've always, I've always been really into art growing mm-hmm. up and for me drawing was like my favorite thing ever ever mm-hmm. since I was a tiny kid. Um, so I naturally I started to get really into animation and when I was discovering more animated movies I f- stumbled upon Ghibli. Right. And those movies just really touched me as I think they do for a lot of people. Um, so I started to get more into Japanese animation, Japanese comics, and that led into, you know, fashion and cuisine Mm. and all these different parts of Japanese culture. Um, So I definitely had this, like, this fantasy about going to Japan and that it was going to be this, like, this whole new world of, like, people living in a completely different way and a different type of art and music and... Um, so it must have been fun. Like, it was it yeah. was wonderful. I was really excited uh, the first time I went there. And uh, I think that feeling of adventure uh, was what led me to moving to Japan. Yeah. And even like the Japanese model work and the scene is different, right? Yeah, I think I think it's very different uh, culturally from the States, just like the way that the modeling industry is. Um, there's definitely like two parts to modeling in Japan because there's like the foreign models who come to visit mm. Japan and do short term stays. And then there's, you know, Japanese models who are Japanese or people who are foreign, but in the domestic industry, yeah. um, which is, you know, it's their full career and their their life. Right. And you were talking about um, those like super huge model shows, like runway shows where it's like, like, like massive. Oh, yeah, yeah. You told me about that. Wait, so what, what are those all about? Uh, um, there's this thing called Tokyo Girls Collection and also Girls Award. Um, you should check it out, though, okay. on YouTube or something. But there's these shows in Japan. Um that are just it, like insane there's like 30,000 people go to them they, it's the they coachella book out, like, it's the coachella it, of modeling kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's it's like so but there's like musical performances and there's yeah. actors so it's like if you had like a runway and then there was like every top model and like some top actors and top right. singers and like everyone was wearing like one brand like everyone was just wearing like gucci or something oh, and shit. then everyone like maybe like diesel because i don't think like gucci ever would it's more like that kind of brand or right, something like right, right, right. a lot of domestic brands but um and then that's it's, it's a really long show though it's like four hours long because they have musical performances um there's sponsored content but it's really fun because that that's one of the things i love about japan too is the culture of like the fan culture over there is really involved and really passionate yeah and um people would show up to to see their favorite models walk and that's just that, like, like an yeah. incredible like the fandom thing. of the models like that exists There's yeah like, it definitely yeah. does um i think in the states i'm you know i, I can't say for sure because i maybe some people are really dedicated to the models that right. they like and follow but um i think more so in japan they're seen more as personalities mm. um because it's not it it definitely there is like the the visual aspect of it of course but it's a lot to do with personality and being on talk shows and being right. in like the same magazine so like models will do one magazine and they'll be like signed to that magazine oh shit um so. that's good how was like because you are now making a lot of noise as an artist too a passion that you've had for so long and even before you know it was like it wasn't it wasn't a business for you or anything and yeah. um you know has that transition from being a model into that have been ha- like it was it a different journey in a sense you think if you weren't um, a model like you know fusing in both kind of brands in a way yeah it's it's i mean it's 
it's it's been a wonderful journey to say the least just to be able to you know reconnect to what what i've been so passionate about my whole life and i think that and it seemed very natural too like uh, yeah i think that i think for me art is um it's it's kind of it's what i use to understand my life for my whole life and it's what like really makes me feel connected to myself and um I realize that through sharing my work with the world, even if it's something that's so personal and vulnerable to me, it, that's what's going to connect me to other people too. Right. But I always thought growing up that art was something that was going to keep me indoors and behind a computer screen and far from everyone. But I think that um, through you know putting myself out there as myself, I've learned the power of um, of being vulnerable, and that right. in that is the is the only way you're going to. Uh, find the right people well a lot of times I feel like in the entertainment industry with modeling acting and all that there's a lot of wait time with in between projects for you yeah. know that that gets shared you know yeah, whether sure. it's a release so it's always nice to have something else that's like keeping you busy yeah you know yeah. Um, and I'm not talking just a job or anything but just to keep you busy and mentally like sane and passionate about mm -hmm. things you know um, like I'm, I'm getting into acting and uh, you know, doing radio stuff and all that, yeah. but in between, I'm I'm so grateful I have music, and I don't even consider that to be like a yeah. financial thing. It's just like something to keep me busy and sane, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, how did how like how did you transition into actually having that aspect for you? Yeah. You know, making income off of that. Did, was it like people just seeing it on Instagram as you were sharing it? I think that yeah, I think a lot of it is is due to uh, sharing stuff on social media because I think that that is one of the best ways to get your work out there nowadays. But um, I, I mean, it, it was a very slow process because I remember I did my first big illustration job when I was uh, eighteen, just coming off of maybe I was nineteen at the time when I moved back to Japan after the show and I did this like big uh, mural in Osaka for this department store. Sick, yeah. And that was, I remember, uh, cause I was working on that. I was, I moved to Japan and I was living in like this really tiny like models apartment studio. Mm -hmm. um, and I had like no furniture. I had like a futon on the floor and like a, t like a tiny desk, but I had a lot of art supplies and I was working on this job uh, between doing modeling jobs and other things that I was kind of managing by myself and um, I did everything in watercolor and then they scanned it and printed it onto these huge windows so I went down to Osaka to visit it when it was up and the feeling of like seeing you know some my my world that has always felt like something that I never wanted to show people because I had been you know so um, it was just such a personal thing for right. me but to see that like there on those walls in front of people it really um, it, it it sparked something in me I think and I that's a feeling that I wanted to pursue ever since then it was a feeling of like totally being outside of myself and feeling right. so connected to the world even though it's something I did you know in my room by myself yeah no it feels crazy because like in the last two years or so that I've been following you like just the when the artwork just pops up you know that you decide to share or whatever it's like oh shit this shit is like it's good oh thank you but i think <laughs> like i feel like yeah. as i've seen also the, the, uh, yeah uh, that was the the transition of you sharing it and then people responding to it like it was just like snowballing in the way yeah. people were actually wanting to collab and brands started coming you know because it, it like you've worked with a lot of big brands in the last two, three years, and that's pretty much kind of the beginning of when your artwork is getting real public too. So it all yeah. it's all happening at the same time. You yeah, know? it was. Uh, that could be a little overwhelming it, for anyone. You it, know, it definitely was overwhelming at times because I think that you know when you put yourself out there and when you do things like that, you do like, you know, your your struggles and like the things that you fight with art artistically, they do grow with you. Uh, they never go away, and I I've, I've been. Uh, so grateful to be able are so lucky to be able to um to to be able to do what i love and what in my work um but yeah it's been a crazy journey and sometimes like honestly a lot of days i'm just sitting like in my apartment in my bed staring at the ceiling being like this is not real no i mean literally in the last year you've collabed with marvel mark jacobs you know uh and you put out your own sketchbook published book pretty much you know that's what that, that is yeah. you know and that's fire that's so tight thank you so much like your whole collection with mark jacobs was crazy and thank it wasn't you, like you. one piece it was like 
a gang of pieces. Thank you. That was uh, it was one of the the most fun jobs I've ever done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, really. How long? How long does something yeah. like that take? Like um, um, it's a collaboration like that where it is you know multiple pieces. You know, we're talking yeah. like more than ten. That things, was, right? I it think was, there was 11 items in yeah. total, but we started, um, so I went out to New York to actually work from their office last mm, February or March, and I was there for about two and a half weeks to three weeks-ish working with them. Um, uh, some of the work was work that I did before going there, but then a lot of it was stuff that I did uh, on the spot just to try to, you know, to see it on the products and to see what would make sense. Um and then it came out in October, so that was the timeline for everything. Did, did you go to Did you go to college for um, art? No, actually, I never went to art school. Um, I was going to go to art school. I had applied, and I got into the college that I had dreamed of going to for my whole life, mm -hmm. basically. Um, well, I remember because I had been doing modeling in Japan and focusing on other things it came you know it was senior year and it was like oh shit like I have to figure out what I'm actually going to do with my life because it wasn't like modeling was doing right so good for, I wasn't doing so well you didn't modeling, feel also, and also secure. I didn't feel like that was me it just kind of felt like it was it was some feeling I was pursuing so but it wasn't I, like an end all even if you were yeah. like okay I got this contract yeah, it was you sure. didn't feel like secure like this is this I could this is going to be my life for the next whatever years you know yeah but it was it was weird because I struggled with this feeling of like I loved that sense of like adventure and going to a country in which mm -hmm. I had no connection to to build something for myself. But I I knew in my heart that like I couldn't not be an artist. Um, but I, I knew, too, that uh, when I got into this school and when I was really thinking about it, because I thought about it for a long time, like, shit, what am I going to do? Am yeah. I going to am I going to actually go to this school and, you know, stop everything in Japan and just kind of, you know, just go down that path instead but I realized that a lot of the reason that I wanted to go to that school was because because it was hard to get into and because a lot of people kind of told me that that was like if you got in there then like oh yeah then you made it and like, yeah. that's good and people with my you know people around me would be proud of me there's stuff that's going to be on paper that yeah, you can show and be like okay I have this at least yeah and I I felt like I had to be honest with myself of like, okay, but this is a four year commitment. And it's like, if I don't start living for myself today, right? I never will. Mm. And I know it's not the smartest option. It's not the safest thing, but no, I was but like, it, I think I'm going to move to Japan. It, 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 <laughs> it is smart in a way. Cause you were thinking very strategically that a lot of people before considering college don't think about, you know, because we do yeah. think college is the safest route, you know, yeah. and it works for certain people, but I don't think we can say it works yeah. for everybody. And, and there are different yeah. approaches to it, but you do have to plan. You have to be strategic. Yeah, for sure. And I feel, you know, extremely lucky to be in a situation in which I have that option. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of really felt in my heart that I, it was my duty to myself to, to give right. it my all, to try to make what I love into a career. Right and see how that goes first. So, so are making a career out of art was the ultimate goal? I think, yeah, my ultimate goal was I wanted to, I wanted to, to express things and feel things and, and I just, uh, that was kind of what I pursued. I didn't know exactly what that was going to be because I did like doing modeling and I liked the performance aspect mm -hmm. of it and then now doing acting, I kind of figured out through um, trying a bunch of different things so I think what I'm truly passionate about is to express something right. and kind of story tell no matter what that format is um, what, what, at what point I'm curious with people who paint illustrate like yeah when do you f when when was the first time you felt comfortable like sharing your art publicly publicly because oh, yeah. this is an interesting question because for me when I was growing up I was I, you know, had I had to get the nerve to step into like a cipher and start freestyling with everybody else, you know. That and must have been crazy. Yeah, it was, but it was kind of a little less nerve wracking because there was less cameras. It was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. Yeah. So you don't, you don't, people, you're not gonna, you don't have to revisit that through footage. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a little hard, less yeah, harder to do that now. Yeah, nowadays everyone whip the iPhone. Out, yeah. But <laughs> that that was great. The fact that you can have this incredible night of jamming with people and freestyling with each other, and then that's it. You yeah. don't have to rewatch because when you rewatch, it doesn't have the same effect ever, yeah. you know, but with illustrations and paintings like, yeah, you're about to share it, like especially on, like social media. Like when did you feel like, OK, I'm going to put it out there and see what people. Oh, I, I, I mean, I've been I've been sharing my work uh, online since maybe I was 11. 
Uh, but I did that anonymously, and I had like this oh, account you did. on. <laughs> I had a YouTube account. Right. I had a DeviantArt account, but no one knew it was me. And I think I there was I, no I, pit picture attached. Yeah, to it. no yeah. one knew if I was a male, female, how yeah. old I was, where I lived, like nothing. It was just, <clears> and I loved that. That was my safe space. Basically, was I could, I could share anything. I could be anything. Um, Shout out to DeviantArt, pretty OG. OG uh, web website for artists for sure. <laughs> My heart, um, but I let's see. Um, no, like growing up, literally, like within when in middle school, I, there's a, a long stretch of time, maybe the entirety of middle school and then part of high school, um, where I was terrified of showing anyone in real life my work because I felt ashamed of it, and I actually felt embarrassed um, right. that I was drawing because I was very interested in dark things and I was drawing a lot of gore and um, yeah. a lot of like dragons and creatures and I was <laughs> like that's not I don't know why but I just told myself that that's not cool and like no one's gonna like that right. and you, you thought know. that was like the more nerdier like drawing illustration yeah. what would be a cool drawing though at the <laughs> you know what I mean like I don't know I think I think I just had a lot of self-confidence issues so I think that no matter what I drew I right. probably wouldn't feel okay with sharing that with people but then I started to share my work online which is like really my safe space yeah. um, no one in school knew like what my accounts were mm. or anything and then um, after I started modeling though I, s I started to slowly use Instagram and slowly let myself be okay with me putting my artwork out there so as mo myself. modeling helped a lot of the confidence I think part of it too. yeah I think what modeling did for me too was to show me that it's always okay like mm -hmm. I you know people have said everything to me um not everything but you know in modeling you yeah. get judged by the way you look by right. just everything um so you, you're able to learn that it, that it's okay and people will always do that no matter how you act no matter who you pretend to be if you're true to yourself if you're not people will hate you and people will love you so you, you know you gotta just do you and let that be enough um and so i started to put my art out there online and I started to connect with some more people but then really the first time I like publicly showed my work was when I was on the reality show right and I did this gallery show um, at this little cafe uh, called Arts Cafe in Honolulu which is wonderful and if you go to Honolulu definitely check it out um, that's cool it was like a local yeah uh, and yeah. I DM'd them because I really wanted to I was like okay now I think this like I'm ready to like you know because I was on the reality show too and I just felt like if I would be okay with showing my work to that large of an audience then I, I i knew that was something that i wanted to overcome and that i wanted to yeah the reality sh happen. the reality show that's a huge audience already it was, a, it, was <laughs> a, it was an incredible um yeah but you were just incredible time of getting to like be close to people and um yeah to to push myself and but that's cool because you f when you're on the reality show and you're just drawing one morning it doesn't feel like i'm about to share my art with like yeah, thousands for sure. million I th people I think, like the first day we were filming too i was drawing in the morning and then they're like okay we're gonna film now and i was like oh my god okay. right but um then uh you know when you when you become okay with showing the world yourself right then you really become okay with yourself that's true. That's and point, um yeah. That's it. That's the only way to do it. Like if you're scared of something, it's because it matters to you. Yeah. You you got when if you if you can tackle that, you really become stronger. And um, I did so that see that scene where he he walks in on you in the morning and you're like, wow, you're really good. Like I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just spend, yeah. <laughs> she, he's like, how long have you spent on that? You're like, oh, just this morning. And he was like, oh shit, like that's what? like, are you generally pretty fast with your uh, art? Like, um, I think that. I, it, de it depends definitely but if I'm just sketching like from my mind right. something that I like it can be really fast mm. like you know 15 minutes 30 minutes because um, I had Jim Lee on here and he mentioned that oh, uh, cool. he was like really uh, he's fast you know when it comes yeah. to just drawing that's one thing that you know yeah but yeah I mean there's like there's a lot I mean uh, we see a lot of artists but I think one big thing about just art is you know not to think about it too much you know like even Kenny talks about the don't, don't overthink shit and that's real like in the studio oh yeah in the podcast yeah yeah with, with music and and um art it, it is the one th we we block ourselves you know when we start thinking too much to call it analysis paralysis you know like yeah. we 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 stun ourselves yeah. and you never get anything out you wait 10 years to make the perfect album and what you don't it's realize is happen. like yes. you're never gonna make the perfect thing to please anybody yes. so you might as well not please them now then yes. later on wait 10 years yes. you know? and it is so important to be stupid and to make right. mistakes but i think that social media nowadays too like we we're constantly surrounded by people being successful and we're comparing ourselves and it just it really paralyzes you and you that's you, true you know you need you need to mess up and you need to you need to make things that don't always work but yeah with you know if you if you're like 
if you're not living in today taking living off the feeling that you feel right now and you're stuck worrying about the future or something you did in the past it's it's just this it's this non-ending circle you're running it's true though i think when we make a mistake now it's not even a mistake you're just canceled you're fucking done (laughs) you know that's 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 kind of yeah that's 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 one thing i don't People love um, seeing, yeah, like you just being done. They don't want to see like the comeback. Yeah. No, I mean, there's not like that rooting for the comeback yeah, anymore. I feel that's like because you know people go to the end, the internet to escape something in their lives, right? Because right. you you're going there for entertainment, because you're bored, or you're going there because you're mad and you want to prove something, or you like genuinely like you're trying to connect to family. But I think that um, for me, I've tried to like separate myself from the mm. criticism online just because it's. Um, it's something that will always exist no matter what I do, whether I feel good about what I've done, whether I put out something I don't believe in. Like, I think that, uh, people are always going to, you know, anything that someone says is because they want to, they want to put that out there. What publicly. kind of criticism would you get like off of something like a um, reality show? Is Like, I'm just curious. Cause it's yeah, like, from, what, what, I always I get think, curious about yeah. how people find shit to hate on. You know what I mean? Cause it's like. Okay, I get it. I could, if I put out a whack song, it could be like, fuck, this song sucks, yeah. you know? But if I'm watching, like, the reality show, and you're generally, from what I've seen on your personality, not, like, wild or anything. You're not giving off, like, a weird energy or anything. Like, I don't... Yeah, I don't... So, like, I'm curious. Like, how? what, what, are, the, what are the things yeah, you've I, seen? I mean, I definitely... I'm, I'm definitely not, a, like, a loud, out there, wild person, but... Um, you're not the snooky of I, Tara's house or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, um, I mean... Cause you know I'm just a person. Like right. I'm just a normal ass whatever. I'm just a person. So like I I have uh, seen I've gotten a lot of like DMs and comments and like there's like online things about it too. But uh, I think that what kind of I mean like just like in me not being genuine or me being like things that I've said on the show to other people, things that how I've acted and what that must say about me. There's, I mean, are, are I think that people like when you put yourself out there on a reality show, um, I mean, you putting your, yourself out there to be judged, but not just, I've learned it's not just a reality show. It's like in anything you do, whether it's yeah. Instagram or Twitter, but they just don't, um, have, they don't have to like you with Terrace house. Like besides it being like the Japanese uh, phenomenon, like I think it really blew up when it got on like Netflix and American market. Yeah. Cause I, started hearing about it and they were just like oh it's like real world but japanese and you watch it it just has a complete different vibe but like did you see like that kind of transition because obviously it blew up in japan you saw like fan base come in but like that that the american cats coming up to you being like i saw you on terrace house was that like a weird transition i mean it well the it came out in japan i think maybe like two months or three months after we started filming and i think it came out in the states not that long after that maybe maybe it was like after i'm not even sure now Mm. i can't remember but it came out not not too long after um but it was crazy to like be in my hometown in hawaii and have people come up to me because a lot of people in hawaii watch the show because you know there's not a lot of like hawaii 50 that's about it but there's not a lot of shows filmed over there so it was i mean it it still is like if people recognize me it's a really yeah crazy thing of like wow that they watch like i can't believe that that show like reached this audience of like that these yeah it's uh i always it's see really l- wonderful though i'm happy that's yeah. tight i always love a good success story coming out of the reality uh tv space <laughs> as, as in <laughs> no no it's just like yeah because you know it could get pretty wild in it and then there's few people that came out of reality tv that kind of killed it uh jamie chung yeah for sure yeah, yeah, yeah she's a she's, she's a yeah, huge yeah. Um, and yeah, she's in like superhero shit too, like um, The Gifted or something, right? She's on that show. Yes. Yeah, which uh, you are about to be on a TV show that's gonna air in literally weeks from now. Yeah. And uh, it's your f- this is your first ever scripted uh, TV. Yes, debut. this is my first. Uh, yeah. This is my first time doing scripted acting. Besides, like, no, I did a, a short film with my friend Julian, who's wonderful in Tokyo. He's like a French filmmaker. But besides, this is my first time doing. Uh, like a like a TV series, right, like right. This, yeah. And this is uh, the show called Legion on FX. Uh, it's a Marvel yes. series, uh, comic book series. And um, did this connection come from you uh, illustrating something for Marvel? Like uh, um, this was like last year. It's interesting because it was actually. I mean, this past year. Completely um, unrelated. Oh wow. 
um, actually the the showrunner and people were kind of surprised too when I told them like oh actually it was kind of like oh that's cool that's like that you did that but they're it just wasn't like oh that's <laughs> or like well it's I think that people thought that was a really cool connection but right. um, it wasn't like oh who's because this the, person that yeah did that? it makes sense it's um, like oh yeah look at this girl who illustrated this should we just throw in an audition <laughs> <laughs> that would be easy if that yeah, was right 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 but um. I got the audition from my agency and that was actually around the time of the Marc Jacobs uh, collection release. So mm -hmm. I was at the event and I remember that they sent me this audition and uh, this was, uh, yeah, one of the first auditions because I did one audition for a movie before that that I didn't get. And then this audition came through and I... You self-taped for it, right? I self-taped on my iPhone. I went in and my friend and I, we just taped it on my iPhone uh, and sent it in and then... Uh, Noah Hawley, who's the showrunner of Legion, he uh, responded well to it. So they asked me to do another scene. And then I taped that with my mom, actually, who was visiting yeah. uh, because of the Mark Jacobs stuff. And is your mom a good reader? She's good. She's good. Yeah. OK. Because, you know, like I've, I've self-taped a lot with friends who are like but my, all, all my friends that are down to self-tape. They just don't give me enough passion on the other end of it. So, like, I can't get into the scene. It, it can be hard. And then yeah. like, also it's hard to I feel like it's hard when you make eye contact and they're right. kind of like, hey, <laughs> Stop. Right. You can't go down that path. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you got to really bring in the zone. Because sometimes it could be very monotone the way they read back yeah. the thing, you know. Um, but that's cool. So you self-taped. and yeah, um, I self-taped. Th this, is, this is a crew of superheroes, and you uh, your superpower is what? Time travel. Time travel. That's kind of like, if you think about it, is it's kind of the, the most one of the most powerful things because you could change the fate of what well, happens well i hope that you watch the show yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but um it's it was i mean yeah I, it was wonderful you loved the role i loved it i loved everyone who was like working on that team it was just because doing modeling in japan and doing uh illustration from tokyo i think it was it was kind of hard for me to really connect with people and have uh, really close relationships with just anyone um, because I was always traveling. I was always doing working with different people every mm -hmm. day. You know, sh if you're shooting like 12 hours a day with a different team every day, including weekends, except some weekends, then right. you, it's, you know, it's just hard to settle and actually yeah. have that. Um, so it was it was one of the greatest experiences because I really um, you know to be able to get that close to a group of such passionate talented people is um, truly truly inspiring I, I feel like especially when you get into a project something that already is like a subculture yeah something like comics right like yeah. you're already marrying into this huge fandom that exists you know uh, like there's conventions about these things yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like, I went to I went to Comic Con that was yeah. crazy and we did uh, WonderCon like, for the show it was crazy like too. a big like announcement stuff like meeting the cast and things like that right yeah well, that was that was so fun we did WonderCon uh, down in Anaheim mm -hmm. Um, it was actually the same convention center that I did DesignerCon at because yeah. I went to DesignerCon uh, like as an illustrator to right. sell prints and stuff um, so that was really cool to be there uh, for a TV show because a lot of my friends were there uh, and had booths like as artists. Mm -hmm. So did you have anybody coming up asking them to sign like the cover you did for like uh, Miss Marvel and yeah, stuff? Yeah, actually, I did. I did. Um, when I was doing Designer Con, a lot of people brought the Captain Marvel Captain cover. Captain Marvel. Or I said Miss Marvel. I it's, like, okay, it's okay. She's cool like, too. I'm like Mrs. Same, Maisel. Uh, another the, title, but yeah. The Mrs. Marvelous <laughs> Mrs. Maisel that you illustrated. <laughs> no, okay. The uh, yeah yeah Captain Marvel cover you did. Um. Uh, but they, they were bringing that and some people brought my book and it yeah. was uh, that's cool so yeah it was great it's kind of like a crossover for you man it's, yeah. just been, it's just been like a crazy um, a yeah. crazy couple year and a half or two years though but um, it's really like I've been crying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I've been crying yeah, just so much. Yeah, emotional shit. You know, like, yeah. hap like happy crying or like emotional. Like get it just, together. <laughs> no, but like seriously, <laughs> yeah. dumb. I cry like twice, a, three, right, four. Right, right, I'm right, not right. even going to try to count. Like it's going up. But right, like right, I right. count. I've been, cr I've been crying. Well, that's good. Like because you're crying like, tears of joy, like yeah, overwhelmed. there was like, this time when this girl um, was telling me like that she really connected to the book or something. And I just oh, had this dope. flashback of like me sitting in middle school with my sketchbook feeling like I, like just ashamed and not ashamed but just feeling like that that was not cool and like but just to see that something that was so personal and like emotional for me could right help me connect to someone else in that capacity or that someone would like my work that felt that that was just really from my heart it uh well i think i moved a lot <laughs> well i think one cool thing about you and that's what a lot of young girls maybe get inspired is that 
it's kind of happening in real time because you're still really young, you know what I mean, in, in the game and even in general. Like, you put in the work uh, just preparing yourself on the craft side, not focus on the business thing, and all that stuff just came natural after you've honed in on the craft, you know? It, um, yeah, it, it feels like I'm constantly learning on the job because I, I have a long way to go in terms of <coughs> artistic ability, like technical ability. You know, I've, there's so much that I would love to be able to draw and I want to learn how to do, but... Um, I have, it's been a true joy to share that journey with people online. And I think that's why I love the internet is I think it can really be a place where you're finding inspiration and a place where you're connecting to others. But, you know, somewhere along the line, uh, for me at one point too, it turned into this terrible place where I was just comparing myself to people and I was just, not, you know, I wasn't, it was, it was not the kind of relationship I wanted to have with the internet. Right. Um, but now that I truly see it as a place where I can, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to share my journey with people. Um, it's great. And I love anyone that is coming along on that with me. Yeah. You, you've been uh, moving around a lot from, J uh, you know, Japan uh, to here. You lived, you know, Massachusetts. You said Hawaii. Like, what could you see yourself living in the next 10 years? Um, I would love to live in New York one day. Uh, I was there briefly after high school for maybe like a month and a half or so because uh, my dad lives in New York so I was there with him for a while and then I visit and I go there for work quite often I'm actually going on Tuesday too but um, it's just it's a it's a special city I think and I would love to yeah I met you in that. Korea yeah we met in Seoul yeah, yeah. we met at um, uh, a, a now closed club not, yeah now closed club <laughs> which we don't speak of anymore and uh, no there's mad uh, cool club the club scene out there is nice you know and uh, we I have mutual you. friends and I go to usually the type of clubs that are more just like cool DJs playing. It's a little yeah. smaller, not like mega clubs, which they also have there. It's like mm -hmm. Costco clubs. Co no, <laughs> I, I live for the Costco clubs. It's so fun because I feel like I can just like separate from right. myself completely and right. just be in this mass of like sweaty people who don't want <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's flash your shit, photography huh? taken of them. And I do <laughs> feel like when I met you at the club, like you were definitely into it. Like you were just in the club living it. We were into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. I was, I, I was into it too. Always but, a good um, night. It's cool because I I feel like I don't go to clubs a lot in the states, you know. Yeah. So when I'm out there, I'm like, oh, whatever. I'll just yeah. do it. I've never been to a club in the United States of America. Ever. Uh, you know, I went to that place at the Roosevelt Hotel once. Right, right, right. But right. I was only there for like thirty minutes, and that's that more a like a, no, it's, it's that, like like I've a never, pool and a, yeah. Yeah, I've never been to like a club in right. the states, like One Oak or something. Um, right. Maybe I should. Maybe that's my next that's life <laughs> in journey. Some of my goals in 2020 is go to a club. <laughs> trying to go to One Oak. Nah, <laughs> that's the, that's not. Yeah, that's, I've heard that exact tone. I feel for like One I'm Oaks. gonna grow. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah. You're killing it. You could play a LA person. That's in a, a dream film. of mine. Is a that dream. I would love to. You were blonde uh, recently too, so you're ready to I go was full blonde. on. I was blonde. I just let it be known that I loved being blonde. Right, right. I did. No, I mean you're a model in Los but Angeles. You gotta go to clubs. That's how. That's how it works. <laughs> now, um, so like, you want to do more acting? I do definitely. Yeah. Um, what kind of roles do you want to play? I'm, um, you know, because there's all yeah. types of acting, uh, you know, comedic roles and mm -hmm. dramatic roles, and they are two different things, you know. Yes, I would. Mm, I would love to. I mean, I'd love to try anything. I guess. I think like when I see a project or like a, you know, an audition, I get to read the script. It's really, you know, if you feel. Um, I, f I feel like because I I have like no experience so like there's basically any type of role I feel like would be somewhere where I could right. really learn and put myself into it and um, but I'm really interested in doing more within the fantasy space just because that's right. like I think that's one of the coolest things about film and TV is you get to go to these other worlds right um, but I really love stuff that's uh, that feels extremely grounded in reality and very slow paced mm -hmm. um, so I would love to be in some sort of a drama like that. Yeah, your illustrations are very fantastical. Oh, yeah, th yeah yes. thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've been obsessed with, uh, you know, dragons and creatures and wolves and fantasy, and I think that's the world that my mind feels comfortable in and lives in. So we're talking like Game of Thrones prequel <laughs> or spinoff situation. I was, I was saying this I earlier. Wish. I was saying this earlier that Game of Thrones should have just had a couple, like I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those guys like where the fuck the Asians at a Game of Thrones like it's oh, fine, that, that, yeah. but it's fine. You, you know, I was it just thinking like cool. one yeah. or two Asians. I'm thinking dragon trainers, like the ones who train the dragons. 
You know what I'm saying? Did you watch Game of Thrones? <laughs> I'm just saying. We, <laughs> but yeah, no. I, we could have, you know, because they were getting out of control. No, I mean, you, you know, know, the dragons were getting out of control. And then yeah. I think, it, what, what if, like, you know, Danny was like, yo. I'm gonna hire a dragon trainer. These Asian cats come in. Yeah, it would have it would have been cool if there were Asian people in the show. Definitely. We have a, we have a close connection with dragons, Asians, you know, and I just felt that would have been the perfect opportunity to throw throw a dragon yeah. trainer in there. Um, okay, so um, and you you we're talking about this. I mean, we're not gonna talk about it. Obviously, you can't reveal it, but there's things that you're already auditioning for. Yeah. And then already kind of things are moving. It's yeah. There's uh there's uh. Mm some projects I'm involved with now that are really uh, I can't wait to tell people about oh, right. but, uh, and it seems like well, the, the stuff we've been talking about like like a lot of the projects you're getting involved it's like it's not so far removed from this world that you've been involved in artistically I feel like yeah. which is kind of cool that's really cool yeah definitely uh, the project that I'm really deep into right now is uh, is completely um, about you know me as an illustrator and I yeah, I love it. It's a collaboration with another artist to kind of help to, to make something with them. And it's uh, it's been such a, I mean, I, I keep saying it like, oh, it's been such a, you know, whatever. But it's it really, I'm, I'm learning so much just from like listening to their story mm -hmm. and listening to their team and everything. And um, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm, I'm growing up. Uh, she's I'm growing learning, up. learning things, <laughs> but I love it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, have you thought of, attaching narratives to some of your illustrations and creating your own stories you know yes um that is my ultimate goal is that i would love to be able to create my own uh movie one day it's like been a dream of mine since forever but if i was able to I like write a feature yeah, if I was able to write a feature and do something involving animation and my characters, I would love to because I feel like I'm finally coming to the point where I'm okay with sharing, you know, my characters and stories with the world. And I think that uh, uh, I want to, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, you were doing, uh, trying out a lot of things. I feel like the only thing you haven't done is rap. Or, or sing yet? I am very. Oh, were you is there? there possibility of a Lauren Sai rap or I, singing album? Oh, you missed it at karaoke. Oh, I, didn't see I had I had a rap scene. The that recent was karaoke. The recent okay, karaoke. Okay, I didn't know you went off. I, I must no, have we stepped went, out we, for a second. Maybe you still. I don't even remember, man. But okay. um, it was. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of things. I about had that. I had a I had a moment. That's what's up. Yeah, you were you were saying and you love karaoke. My career is over. We talked about this. you love karaoke. I do. I love karaoke, and I think. Uh, it, I went a lot in Japan, like with my friends. Um, I never went by myself, but that's the thing. Like a lot of people in Japan go by themselves to karaoke. To right? No, no. Korea does that too. So, okay, cool. I, I always saying this like to a lot of people, like singing audition and singing shows in Asia are like not a joke. Like people are really into they're it. They're really good too. Yeah, they're it's, super it's good. It's like, I mean, and that's because they go to karaoke alone and literally use it as a practice space. Like, yeah, that's where they're at. There's oh a lot of God. rooms in Asia, karaoke rooms that like it's like a booth that fits like one person too. But they don't have that a lot here in um, in America. But in Korea, these karaoke rooms aren't just party spaces. They're just like literally rehearsal rehearsal spaces for one person. That's it's like, cool. It's like it's like a photo booth, you know. You oh, really? Like that small? Yeah, that small. I think I've seen that one time before. Yeah. Maybe at like a mall or something. That shit's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy, but now I know. That's it. That's that's. Now I know why. That's why we produce greats like William Hung, who come onto American Idol and kill that shit. No, I'm kidding. I'm William Hung, the man of this generation. Shout out, William. I saw him recently at a spot. You know him? He, well, I don't know him, but I just oh. took a picture with him, and he wrote a book, and his English is like perfect now. Wow. Before he was like he wasn't, you know. He had a little accent, but like I think he's been in America enough where he's just like yeah, he's sounded just, perfect. Oh, he's just an he almost LA had an dude, English accent for no dude. reason. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. no, no, no. Yo, um, that's what's up, yo. I'm happy for you. You got a lot of things going on, and it's it's, you know, you've been working since you were young on this, but in the last two years the opportunities have come, and that's when like success happens when opportunity and preparation meet, and it has met. In the last two years or so, and uh, I don't know why I'm fucking Think going into this motivational, inspirational space and shit. Do your thing, do your thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're getting yeah <laughs> lit off the kombucha right now. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm stoked. Um, we're definitely gonna be chilling more in Los Angeles. Um, since you are here, and all my homies have moved to LA in the last year too. It's like oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, are, you're enjoying it out here. I love it. I really do. I like living in LA. Um. I think that 
it's just a great it's where exactly where i want to be right now for what i want to do and i love uh you know the friends that i have here and i think that being in la has led me to a lot of incredible opportunities and i think that uh you know living in tokyo i had a lot of hesitancy about coming to la but um i mean if if you're not there it's not going to happen so you really have to take a leap of faith um because basically like before i moved to la i would spend all my money (laughs) just to like uh get flights to la so i could stay here for a week to try to like start meeting people and try to like slowly like make something happen and like build a community and like get myself and try like find an agency which i ended up finding and like all that stuff but um yeah you just do it (laughs) (laughs) just do it i like that slogan we should run with it yeah okay cool (laughs) all right (laughs) all right anyways dumb yo uh, thanks lauren for coming on the show um you're welcome anytime uh lauren side look out for uh legion on fx and um yeah you're booked it really well the your sketchbook i purchased a copy by the way yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. I have. Um. Yeah. I had the other. Yeah. Man. I didn't bring it. Are you gonna Are you gonna try to put out another book too? I would love to. Yeah. I would love to. That project uh, is the most personal project I've ever done. Um. And. Was it like? Yeah. It, it was um, from a Japanese pu- publishing. Company. Yeah, it's from a Japanese publisher. Okay. Cool. But it's yeah, it's basically just my personal sketchbook, and that's kind of the thing that moved me the most to be like, you know what? Fuck it. Like I'm gonna, I'm right. gonna, you know, I'm gonna be as honest about my feelings and who I am as I can because I, I don't know. I'm just done trying to be something I'm not. Yo, if you want to check out some of these honest drawings, go to <laughs> <laughs> go to at Lauren Sai. Wait, do you have an art account too? I, I do have an art account. Um, I gotta be more active on it though. I've been yeah. not posting that much recently. Yeah, cause you post Cause your I've art been, on your personal joint too. Yeah, sometimes I do. It's it's weird how I choose it too, cause it's kind of like whatever I'm feeling. I'm like I, I put I, like I need to put something on my main. But right. Um, I've been working on a project though where I can't like show anything, and that's like all the drawings I'm doing. So, uh, it's been a little quiet over there. But no, I'm stoked to um check out you on fx and see you in a different space thank you dom yeah thank yeah you. No, thank I'm you stoked. very much time traveler okay shout out to lauren sai thank you for coming on the show tune in next week for another episode of fun with dumb comment below with guests you would like to see peace yeah.